Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to SDP Connect. My name is Christiana Morales. I am the director here uh, at uh, Disability Voices United of the Self-Determination Program. Um, we have interpretation, so in both Spanish and Korean. So please go to the bottom of your screen, select the globe, and select your language. Even if you speak English, you need to select your language. So um, you will hear if you have a question that is interpreted. If you're on a cell phone, go to the bottom of your phone. There's three dots, select the three dots, and um, then you will be able to select your interpretation. We have a very packed meeting for you today. Uh, so I'm so excited to see everyone. Um, I have a quick first announcement, and that is I'm gonna share my screen really quick that Disability Voices United is going to be at the Ab Ability Expo this weekend. We're going to be there March 15th through the 17th. We're going to be, it's in Los Angeles at the Convention Center. We have a table there. So if you are in the area or you're going to be there, come by, say hi. We would love to see you. And that was my one quick announcement for today. Um, so our next piece is I'm going to introduce our fearless leader, Judy Mark, and she is going to introduce our next guest. Hi, everybody. Great to see you all. I also am very tired from the hour that we lost. I think we should get rid of that whole idea. It's terrible. Um, so we are so excited because we um, are working with a wonderful senator named Senator Nilo, who represents sort of outskirts of the Sacramento area, um, who has introduced an incredible bill, um, which I'm we're going to hear about today. Um, and it's called Senate Bill 1463. And to tell you a little bit about the bill, I'd like to introduce Calvin Rush. Calvin is the legislative director for Senator Nilo. Um, and if you could get him onto the screen, that would be great. Um, Cal, you should all know that Senator Nilo has been a great supporter of the developmental disabilities community for many years and has authored or supported really important legislation over time. And so this um, is an idea that his that he came to us with and we loved it and are really proud to sponsor it. So Calvin, why don't you tell everybody about Senate Bill 1463? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, having me on and giving me the opportunity to chat with you this afternoon. Again, I work for Senator Nilo as his legislative director, and the bill um, is called SB 1463. We've termed it the Self-Determination Program Success Bill. Um, what, what the bill does, it requires the governor to appoint, um, subject to confirmation by the Senate, a deputy deputy director of the program. And the idea is that this individual individual will be held more accountable for the success of the program. Um, I'm sure as many um, on this call already know and aware that the um, rollout from pilot to going statewide um, has um, not been smooth <laughs> to say the least. Um, and we believe that um, in the legislative branch, it's our responsibility to hold the departments accountable. And one of the ways we are trying to do that is by creating this position. Um, and so this would be a deputy director within DDS, um, and it'd be subject to Senate confirmation. So for those of you who may not work in the legislature day to day, um, the Senate oversees a uh, governor appointment. So um, many positions are are appointed and the, they have to go through a confirmation process through the Senate Rules Committee and senators will vet individuals. They'll ask questions. Um, so it does a, a few things. It, it, it gives us the opportunity to hold accountable that individual. Um, it also gives us um, an advocates or clients uh, or uh, various stakeholders opportunities to um, just raise some of the issues, um, you know, pros or cons um, that they've been facing when interacting with the department. And so um, that's the proposal in a nutshell. Um, we're happy to be moving forward with it. Um, and again, I, 
I did want to say, you know, from the senator's um, perspective, he's been very um, interested in the the human services arena, and he's also on the vice chair of budget. And I know it's not quite related to this bill per se, but we've been on also working with other other legislators to reject the governor's proposed um, budget. Um, budget cuts for providers. Um, I, so I just wanted to make sure we're, you guys knew we were working on that as well, because I know there's other priorities in this space. And I just wanted to let you know we can uh, um, walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, that's that's really it in a nutshell. It's not necessarily a complicated bill, but we hope that it can be powerful in um, bringing success to the program and um, enabling others to bring accountability and oversight um, and improvement in the um, program. That's amazing. And uh, so everyone knows uh, Calvin brought a fact sheet and we're going to put the link to that into the chat. And he also um, uh, brought a sample support letter. So if you support this, please use the letter and and, and uh, send in your support for for this uh, bill. Um, we have time for a couple quick questions. If anybody has any specific questions for Calvin, I had one which I'm not sure everybody would necessarily know. Um, where in is a deputy director? So it, like in the the hierarchy at the Department of Developmental Services, where what position is that? Yeah, it would be just under the director. So um, that that is where the the horizontal structure lies. So right, right under that individual. And that's we don't have anyone close to that representing self determination right now, right? That that is correct. And, and in fact, the current um, sorry, if I'm looking at I'm looking at my other screen because I just want to make sure I have my notes right. Um, the current person who would technically be overseeing um, the SDB, SDDB program is currently being borrowed for other priorities, at least on a temporary basis. So again, our goal in, in this bill, um, again, in bringing accountability and oversight is also elevating um, the importance of this program. That's amazing. We have a hand up, G. Rocia. Can you unmute? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Are you able to hear me? I am. Thank you. I wanted to know, would you happen to have that letter in Spanish? That support letter? I do not, but I will do my best. I know, um, especially there's some... AI translation services that like I might be able to do that and um, I'll follow up with uh, uh, DVU to to hopefully provide that. Yes, thank you so much. Personally, I would like to support and share it with other people, but I need to provide the information in Spanish. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will get that to you. Absolutely. Um, and I think, I think that we, we don't have any other questions, although we, you got some, uh, support in the chat of people thanking you and thanking the Senator and thinking this is a great idea. So wonderful. Great. Well, thank you. And I wanted to uh, have a special shout out to Judy here. She's been amazing to work with. Um, and she's just definitely been an advocate and a fighter in the hallways. So I just wanted to um, give her that uh, quick note of uh, support. And at least from me on a legislative staffer perspective, I can definitely tell she's um, a worker and an advocate and a fighter. So um, what, thank you for that. And I think I see a hand up, but if there's any, I've time for a little bit more questions, but if not, I will um, let you get to the important work. Thank you so much, Calvin. And if we get more questions, and we will also put out an email to the thousands of people that are on our mailing list to encourage them to also send in letters of support. The, the one thing that I did want to say is that this bill, 1463, will be heard 
um, on April 1st in the Senate Human Services Committee on the same day that the other self-determination bill by Senator Menjivar will also be heard. So if you are able to get to Sacramento on April 1st, it's a two for that day, two for one, two bills that will improve the self-determination program being heard on the same day, and you will be able to get up in front of the senators and express your support for the bill. So if you're able to get there that day, we strongly urge you to get there. Oh, we have one more hand up, Rasheen. Oh, I muted for a second there. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. So, um, I'm sorry, I have a question. I wanted to know what's the difference between like the op ombudsman office mm -hmm. and deputy director? I mean, I mean, I know a little difference, but if he can explain. Um, I'm happy to start and then Calvin, you continue. So the ombuds person is there as a problem solver. Um, that was that was legislation that DVU introduced several years ago um, and got enacted. Um, they are there to help individuals work out their individual problems um, in the self-determination program. They also make recommendations to the department, to DDS, for wholesale systemic changes that would improve the self-determination program. But all they can do is make recommendations. They can't actually implement them. And then maybe, Calvin, you want to throw out how the deputy di director would have a different set of powers. Absolutely. I think um, where the difference is an ombudsman will kind of serve as maybe an advocate or a fighter for a particular individual. And then they take that information that they've seen in their experience and turn that into recommendations that might be a wholesale change. For instance, they might say, I've helped so many of these individuals with this one particular problem. I think we just need to make I, I recommend that we make this change so these problems don't happen. Um, the Generally speaking, the deputy director will be the person in power who can make those changes oftentimes. And they're the person um, in the administration um, where it would be their job to implement policies um, and, and be that decision maker. Um, obviously they have to do things by statute and by regulation, but they, you know that they're the ones who who are doing the actual work uh, or and making those uh discretionary decisions but that's a great question uh, yeah so we are definitely not in this position looking to take away or override or overstep anything that the um, ombudsman person would be doing uh mikai Are you able to unmute? There we go. Taking a while to get to the I'm very excited that this still, I think it will engender more accountability and protections for our families. And I hope to further dialogue with Nizel that the um the bill that would restrict um persons with disabilities right to execute their enforcement rights under the ADA. Uh, I believe Nilo is corresponds of that bill and I'm also concerned as my son goes in the workforce and into employment, we need to protect our rights of equal access and non discrimination. So I look forward to having that, that dialogue as well with Congressman Needle. Thank you. Thank you, Mikai. And you actually gave us the perfect segue to our next section. So we're going to be talking about employment. Um, Calvin, thank you so much for be, being here. Thank the senator. Send him all of our support and love and um, come back anytime. Thank you. I will do that. 
Uh, so we are actually doing part three of our three-part series of what works for us. And this was for the grant from uh, DDS. And because this was a grant, we need to do a pre and post survey. So I'm going to ask everyone, I know if you've been here the last uh, couple connects, um, we're gonna put a pre-survey into the chat. It's just six questions and I would really, really help us if you would um, be willing to quickly do answer those six questions. At the end, we're going to do another one. There's actually I think seven or eight questions on the, la the last one uh, to see if you learned something today. And hopefully everybody is going to learn something today. Um, so I'm gonna give you just a minute to do that. And then I am going to start our presentation. I feel like there should be some sort of music, don't you? Like I'll hum, da, 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 da. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. Thank you all so much. For, for going and filling it out. It really, really helps us out. And I am going to share my screen. Here we go. Um, so as I said, this is what works for us. This is the third part in our three part training. The first section was about how the self-determination program opens up new opportunities and avenues for working um, as opposed to the traditional system. Um, the second part was all about public benefits and how employment and public benefits work together and that anybody who wants to work should work and to find the assistance that you need to make sure that you are going out and working. Do not let it be a barrier for you. And then we came to this one. This was the last um, uh, area that so many people had questions for. And I love it. It's, it's to me a very exciting thing of the new direction employment is going. We had so many questions about micro enterprises. So we decided we're going to do an entire training on micro enterprises. And uh, so I'm one of your presenters, Christiana Morales. Kelly Colzareas is here as well. She is an expert. She is one of our trainers. You've probably seen her if you have done any trainings uh, with us from some of the uh, regional centers. Um, she is going to be talking about uh, what the person center plan, things you should be thinking about in the person center plan when you're thinking about doing a micro enterprise. Gabriella Guzman is here and she is the founder of Novel School of Art. So she's actually somebody who helps people set up their micro enterprises. And then we have Spiderhood, who is a content creator and influencer, which you're going to love so many great things. Um, and then we have Doug Pascover and Tina Ewing Wilson are going to talk about um, the spending plan side of what things you might be considering and thinking about when you are working on your spending plan. So let's get started. We have a lot to get through today. And so Kelly Colsa Reyes, are you there? I Hi. am. Oh. But I can't see you anymore. Oh, hi. There I am. There you are. Hello, um, everyone. Thank you for being here with us today. Um, I would just am very honored and excited to be talking with you about the self-determination program, the person-centered plan, and how that can be used to move us towards employment. So I think you're probably very familiar with those principles of self-determination, right? That's the freedom to choose things that you want, to have authority, like be able to control some of this, like what's happening in your own life, support from outside, you know, whether to access the employment of your choosing or support to help find those jobs um, and maybe job coaching while you're there that responsibility that we all have in the self-determination program to advocate for and seek accommodations when we need them. And then a confirmation, the uh, ability to, um, to work without barriers. So those are all pieces of how the self-determination principles can really help guide us when we're looking at employment. I think Christy's gonna move that for me. Thank you so much. So what does it mean really to be person-centered? I think we throw the term around often um, and sometimes we forget who that person is. So I'm the mom of an 11-year-old 
And I have to remember that the plan is for my 11 year old. It is not for me as her mom, right? So it's the things that interest the individual served by the self-determination program. Um, it means that the individual involved makes the decisions about where they work, where they live, with whom they live, who cares, you know, for me and with me, um, where do I socialize, with whom do I socialize, all of the pieces of life that we all take for granted often, um, those are the pieces that are so important to have really firmly rooted in the person-centeredness. So in a person-centered plan, um, when you're connecting it to the self-determination program, it really needs to be focused on the individual served by this program, right? So it's a living document. If something changes, you can update this plan. It doesn't have to stay for a whole year. It could change after a month. It could change when you're inspired to figure out, you see a micro enterprise idea in the world and you want to change your plan, go for it. All you have to do is keep adding to that plan as things change in your own life, okay? That plan grows and evolves with you. It also outlines the total person and then focuses on the participants' hopes and dreams. If one of your hopes or dreams is connected to having a job that's meaningful to you, that is the kind of thing you'd want to include as a goal inside of your person-centered plan. Now, if you are supporting an individual who um, it has a person-centered plan, you can help them engage with this plan, but it always needs to be from their, what they want, not what we want for somebody, but what the individual served by this program really want uh, to be doing. Um, so the plan identifies how in, uh, the participants and how their loved ones can help them reach their goals. And the person-centered plan is the opposite <laughs> of standardized plans. It's not a checklist. It's not a list of resources. It is a plan that um, is can be fluid and can change as life changes. It uses tools to explore and find an individual's needs and desires and preferences as well. Uh, let's see here. So, oh, sorry. I was looking at the chat. I apologize. Who creates the person-centered plan? Well, this depends on the person who's being centered on, right? Some people are gonna create this plan all by themselves. Some people could hire a person-centered planner. Um, remember you have those funds still available to you. Even with some of the changes to SDP, you still can hire somebody to do this if you want to. Perhaps you have an independent facilitator who would help serve in this role and help gather ideas from your whole circle of support. Perhaps your service coordinator has been serving you for a long time and they'd be a great person to, to help you create this. You can also have a family member, a trusted friend, a loved one, a tío, a tía, an auntie, an uncle. I can't say aunt, but aunts would be fine. Um, any of those people could be included in your person-centered planning process. There is not just one way to do this. There are many, many, many ways to ensure that your planning is person-centered. This is really the most important thing about this is that you begin by looking at your interests, okay? Not my interests for my daughter, her interests, which at 11 are, you know, I think she'd like to be a YouTuber. Um, and I suspect getting, putting pieces into her plan to learn how to use social media safely now so that later she can um, access those um, micro enterprise monetizing the social media world. I think she would be living her best life. This is really something that's interesting to her. 
And she loves that. If she loved Taylor Swift and she wanted to make friendship bracelets and sell them on Etsy, that would be another way for her to have maybe a micro enterprise. Now we're talking about the micro. It's this tiny business, right? It doesn't have to be 40 hours a week, go to a store, do what the boss says. Maybe it's something more fluid, more interesting. Maybe you do this thing a different way, right? That is actually why there's no list of resources. Everybody wants a list. There are no lists, <laughs> which is hard and awesome at the same time, okay? So what's great about not having a list to choose from is you can create the thing that would work best for you. Um, but then having that list might make it easier to get started. That's why we're here to like to have talk this through together. All right, what's next? Do you want to do the reading to dogs? Oh, thank you. I do want to talk about reading to dogs. That is a great example. So I have a sweet friend who loves dogs and she loves reading. She's not quite ready to have employment out in the world yet. This is what she wants, but she's not at that spot yet. So she came up with the idea of reading books to dogs at the animal shelter. Right now it's volunteer. Volunteerism is important. We all are volunteering a lot in our lives and it gives a meaningful um, way to contribute to the world. So this friend of mine is reading to dogs and now she can, she has decided to do the safety training to take care of the dogs that are in this shelter. And now she can take the dogs on field trips. So like it's even the, the level of training that's at this location that allows her to be having a meaningful activity, doing things that she loves contributing to the well-being of the animals in this shelter and she's learning job skills at the same time right because that problem with the traditional system we've talked about many times right is oh you're not job ready right that's not the case here because this is like a natural and organic movement from not sure what we want to do to exploring our interests and then developing meaningful work based on those opportunities. Thank you, Christiana. All right. So one of the things that really matters most in this situation, the friend that I have that in this situation is that her mom actually has incredibly high expectations of her. And my friend has high expectations of herself. And those expectations really, really matter. They promote self-efficacy in the belief in the my own ability, in her own ability to overcome challenges and accomplish goals, right? We need to believe that that can happen to improve my own quality of life, right? I, I want to do meaningful things. She loves doing this. And now she's, I think she's doing it two days a week now in addition to all the other awesome things that she's doing. And each time she goes in, it's like a little more um, engagement with the world uh, to facilitate the skill development. Like I said, she didn't know when she was going to start um, with the reading to dogs. Who knew that reading to dogs would be so great? The dogs love it. They see her coming and they're so excited. There's this facilitating that skill development of coming to work on time, doing the things that are needed to be done and getting those pieces under control. It's encouraging her own independence. She's deciding what she wants to do next. Um, it fosters inclusion. This is out in the community. I mean, home and community-based services all, all over the place here. It's motivating. It enhances her motivation. She wants to be doing this. And it breaks the stereotypes. Any of the people who've seen the interactions between this young woman and all the dogs that she is serving and, and taking care of, like there are no limits at this point. This just helps us learn more and contribute to the world. So there we go. Let's go to that next slide, my friend. 
All right. So in, the, in the, I think I mentioned this before, but let's just take a moment to remember that you do not have to be job ready in the self-determination program. You can explore different things. You can use those pre-vocational supports to help get you to a point where you want to be. You can use the self-determination program to help you explore your interests and figure out what kind of micro enterprise or small business or employment opportunity that you would like to be involved with. So you can learn at the same time as you build your career. Now, this is everyone's favorite thing. I know you love them, the generic resources. So we've got the Department of Rehabilitation um, and then we've got the Regional Center's PIP program, pre-internship program that's held outside of your self-determination budget. So if you're using PIP, it's a separate little thing, okay? Um, you've got workability out in the world and don't forget your community colleges. There are career and technical education opportunities that are non-credit, which means they are free to you, available at our 110 uh, community colleges. You can do them online with a support staff person. You can do them independently, in person, independently, online. And it's often something that we call on the community college system, open entry, open exit. So you go and you work on things until you're, you figured it out. If it takes you the whole year, takes you the whole year. If it takes you three weeks, also fine, but you learning at the speed that works for you. So that's an important point. I think a lot of people don't know about California's community college non-credit opportunities. Okay, let's keep going. Holly, before we go, there was yes. a comment in the chat that yes. relates to this that I thought was really important. Okay. And it was, this sounds good in theory, but some regional centers refuse to support somebody under 18 in pre-vocational skill building. And yes. IP is not available to those under 18. Right. How can under 18 year olds begin to develop career readiness when the RCs refuse to support it? My friend, I think that's a great question. And I'm so glad you paused here because in with 331, the community integration supports, you can reinforce skills learned in other settings, okay? That could be any skills learned in other settings. And that's where I think where I would put that inside of a spending plan to, which is not today's like thing, but that's how I would look at it. I'd say, what are the activities that someone under 18 wants to participate in, in order to build some of these um, pre-employment goals? And if you have that pre-employment goal in the person-centered plan, and in that area of the person-centered plan, you acknowledge some of this support will come from the school district. Some of the support will come from, you know, wherever the next place is. Maybe there's a, a something in your community that you want to include, and that might be a natural support, but maybe not a generic one, right? There could be lots of ways to do this. I like 331 for something like this because the um, reinforcing a skill learned in other settings is absolutely reasonable use of funds and not a, uh, shouldn't be an issue. Hold on. We tried this and WRC rejected it on the spending plan. Let's see. I'm not sure what it is yet. So if you have some more specific ideas, maybe the group can help brainstorm to see what that might look like, okay? And I will remind everybody that the purchase of service standards for the traditional system, which say, you know, the uh, employment is for those over 18 or having grad or um, aged out of a, a program. So that might be 22 before they take over employment, do not apply to the self-determination program. Those purchase of service standards do not apply. So if you are having problems with the West side, um, rejecting things in your spending plan, 
I suggest getting the um, ombudsperson's office involved because they cannot prevent you. There is no, if you read the employment parts of the self-determination program descriptions, there's no age limit. And that's one of the powers of SDP. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. So we know in the traditional system, we have the, everything's based on the IPP. Services are through a vendor provider. There are state and regional center contracts, which set the rates. Um, the vendor selects who to provides these direct services, all of it's outside of ourselves, right? The service coordinator reviews and provide um, has service provider options, and they do all this stuff over here. And the regional center then pays those providers. Now, when we're in the self-determination program, there are things you can't spend the funds on, but that's not most of the things. Like what you're really looking for is staff to help with those skill development things that you're maybe something that you need to work on is adaptive skills, executive functioning skills, whatever your goals are. They're based on that person-centered plan where you have a goal about employment and or about micro enterprises. So you have um, there's all the services in that self-determination program person-centered plan are based on the participants' desires and choices. Then the participant sets the rates and negotiates the rates. And the providers are paid, hopefully quickly, through your FMS. Um, participant then selects who provides direct services. I don't have to decide to take somebody from the vendor anymore. I find those people. So yes, it's more work but I get to pick who it is who comes to, to work with my daughter for now. And then she'll pick when she's older. Participant reviews the service provider options and we arrange those, those co and coordinate those services. And your final financial management service pays all of those service providers. It is a very different way to deliver services and it, it's an adjustment. So those of us who are having trouble getting something funded, um, we need to stick with it and, and get help with places like this, okay? All right. And we also need to remember that employment in 2024 does not look like what it looked like 30 years ago when I graduated from high school. I worked at a fast food restaurant and that's what I did. But today I've got my community college students doing the gig economy. And then we've got our um, participants in the self-determination program doing all kinds of different jobs. Now, some of these expect different levels of skills. Just think creatively, think outside of the box. Don't think what we can't do, think what we could do, all right? Gig economy, so short-term projects. God, I just like don't want to see my daughter go into be an Uber driver, but who knows? I'm trying to not put restrictions on her life. Um, DoorDash, God help us all. Uh, micro enterprises, though, I really see this as the the solution for so many of us. Um, influencers, we've got so many people out there influencing us. Why shouldn't it be you? could be all these other people. If it can be them, it can be you too. Printing things on demand, self-publishing music, self-publishing books, having an Etsy store. I will. I spend way too much time on Etsy. I'll buy your stuff. Redbubble is another place to do this. Discord personalities. I'm sure there are a lot of those um, opportunities out there too. I can only imagine how... With how that personality um, works. But then what you need with these pieces is how to monetize it, right? So it's not just a, a volunteer project or, it, or an unpaid thing, but really learning how these modern day employment options actually do make money. It could be on TikTok, it could be a podcast, it could be a freelance artist and so many more things, right? An SDP influencer, Tom, I love it. 
<gasps> you could be on TikTok talking about SDP and how the successes have happened for you. Oh, I think that I've seen a new option. All right. So make sure that you have employment somewhere in your person-centered plan. Um, my daughter has been in self-determination. This is her fourth year. We'll be in year five this summer and she's 11 and we already have employment. We did in her first plan. Employment has always been a long-term goal. Um, and that was, and, and our service coordinator is like, you want your daughter to be employed? Like not today, but yeah. And if we're not working on it now, we're probably not going to get there as quickly as we could have. So all the adaptive skills that she needs to be employed in adulthood, those are all in her plan right now. So what um, in the employment portion of this, like the what's working section of your person-centered plan and the what's not working, right? Um, I like how we've got this. I want to continue living in my home with my family. Great. I want to be working towards creating my brand and podcast. That's pretty specific, right? I want to continue taking college courses, writing classes, art classes, art camps, all of those things can go into that spending plan, can't they? In the social area, I want to continue going to see friends and play games. I enjoy meeting friends for movies. What's not working? That typical, you know, looking for a part-time entry-level job while I work towards my career. That is frustrating, anxiety-ridden, all of the things, right? If you are not a nine-to-five kind of person and that's not your, like, your superpower, let's say, let's find the ways to earn those skills and, and, and know that our contributions still matter and are still meaningful through other means. Okay. Um, I can't see what's behind there, but have not had the opportunity to hang out with my friends. I have not been able to go to the park with my friends. I want to make sure that all the what's working pieces are what we are focusing on because that's going to solve the what's not working part in self-determination, okay? So like moving towards what is working and what we want to be doing more of, that's what we should be focused on. All right, let's see here. I want to create a business, um, making a brand for myself and making a podcast. It's a good goal. I'm working to build a micro enterprise. I would like to intern with existing podcasters or micro enterprise businesses. Those are all really great activities to get towards that employment goal, aren't they? And then what needs to be done, you've got the different possible um, opportunities there. And then you've got underneath that, the uh, support needs that, and then the time frame. So the, there's some really important pieces here. So there we go. All right. Areas to consider for a micro enterprise. Um, let's see here. Training no longer. Lim okay. So what's cool about micro enterprises? Let's say you are doing this podcasting thing. You can take classes outside in the world on SDP. I'm sorry, <laughs> on micro enterprises and on podcasting and like learning how to do those things paying for them with your SDP funds. So any training and animation or voiceover or podcasting or um, uh, um, audio um, editing and all of those little uh, computer software programs that you need to be like cut and paste and do all the, the file work with inside of your software, those are all classes that you can take lots of different ways. Maybe you'll find one at a community college, but maybe you'll find one that's more convenient to you um, at your, um, in, a, in a way that works better for, for your ske uh, schedule, like the Coursera or vocational programs that are maybe not covered through DOR. There we go. And then you can have uh, job coaches you can hire to help you get that done. And then the transportation to get to and from where you're going, you're going to write that into part of that. Like, what do you need to be able to do this micro enterprise? You might need transportation. You might need startup cost for a website. 
Um, and then maybe you'll be using a generic resource like public transportation, or maybe you're going to learn to ride a bicycle. Uh, the I Can Bike program comes to Southern California each year. Um, usually down in Orange County, they have it, and they have it in one other place. I can't remember. But you could write the I Can Bike program in with the uh, so that you can learn to ride a bike if it's not something you already know how to do. You could do Uber and Lyft, although we know that's going to eat up a budget, right? Eat up your spending plan pretty quick. But, you know, if it's after dark and that's the best way to get home at a certain time, you know, maybe it's a backup. Maybe it's all of these things used together to best meet your needs. And then personal assistants that drive um, and, and then you would pay the mileage on that. And Kelly, one thing we kind of didn't talk about was it is different between minors and adults when we're thinking about transportation. Absolutely. And so uh, the, the, there are different rules that apply to minors versus absolutely, them. absolutely. These examples here are typically what you're looking at for um, adults. I'm not gonna get into which regional centers will pay mileage and for minors and which ones won't. That is a that is a whole nother what works for you session, friends. It could take the whole two hours. Um, but the supports you could write into your person-centered plan and spending plan would be things like a job coach, a resume builder, marketing um, help, web design, e-business coaching, communication coaches, bookkeeping to help with those <clears throat> costs, expenses, taxes, if they are incurred because you're making so much money. Um, your personal manager, your, you know, your people, all of those people are your people and you'd have to uh, put them in here. All right. Um, and then things that are tools for your business could be paid for with your self-determination funds, your work clothes, your logo design, computers, if you need them, you might find generic resources or grant-based resources someplace, but you might not. Cell phones, credit card payment, <coughs> excuse me, uh, information about uh, your office supplies and printers, paper, <laughs> um, and then job-specific supplies, but not your consumables. Like if my daughter who really loves Taylor Swift is going to make the friendship bracelets. We're not paying for the the floss, the the thread with the SDP monies because that's going to be sold and that money that we make on it is what's going to be funding the next batch of um, supplies for that. Okay. All right, friends. I don't know, um, Christiana, if you had any other questions or wanted to stop, but it might be past my time. So just want to say thanks for being here, everyone. It would help if I would unmute. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Kelly. And we had so many great questions. And I promise everyone we're going to do questions and answers at the end. But we want to keep going to make sure we get to all of our presenters. That was awesome, Kelly. Um, my next guest that I want to present is Gabrielle Guzman. I call her Gabby. Uh, she is uh, the founder of a company called Novel, and I'm going to have her tell you about it. Gabby, do you want to share your screen? Yes. Okay, let me stop sharing so you can share yours. Okay. All right. Let's share that. Go right here. Okay. Oh, my goodness. That is not how that's done. There it is. There <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Gabriela Guzman. I am the founder of Novel School of Art. A little bit about me. I am a Cuban-American illustrator from Miami, Florida, currently residing in Pasadena. I went to Art Center College of Design on a full-ride scholarship where I got my Bachelor's of Fine Art in Illustration. And I've been working as an illustrator since 2015. And I have done so many things from being a traveling portrait artist across the country where I have painted portraits at parties and events. I have been flown to a private island in Italy in exchange for a portrait. I have had my work in magazines and I have also been working for adults with disabilities for nine years. 
I currently work with five incredible artists. The first being Nick Akeson, who is a budding children's book illustrator and has a dream of working with children, creating a brand called The House of Fun, where he can teach children how to be empowered in their own unique differences and using his art as a means to connect with them, communicate, and help them feel confident in themselves. I work with an artist named Federico Tresieras, or Ricky for short. He is creating a toy brand and also publishing his own book by the end of the year with superhero animals helping other children, again, feel powerful in their unique differences. I work with an artist named Christian Tresieras, who loves monsters and is working on his own sticker brand, his own hand-painted toy line, and is obsessed in a great way with painting monsters on giant canvases that I hope to get in places like galleries, restaurants, libraries, and bookstores. I also work with an artist named James Tatkar, who has his own website now, budgeting with beautiful, bright illustrations of animals having the best day out. He is working on his own coloring book and he has a sticker shop. I also work with Chilton Morals, who by the end of the year wants to have a print-on-demand store and is publishing a collection of short stories. Novel in its definition means unique or different, unlike anything seen before. It means a different way of doing things. And I chose the name Novel for the business because I hope to bring a different way of doing things to self-determination. I sometimes feel like I have a unique way of going about my life and approaching my goals, and so do my artists. So it's not just a name only for the artists, but for everybody to feel empowered in their own uniqueness. One thing that I think is really important and unique about this program is that it has a huge focus on developing products tailored to all of my artists' interests. When I first meet my artists, they tell me everything that they want to do with their life. They tell me what they're interested in. They tell me about their dreams. They tell me about the things that they watch at night. And we figure out ways to tailor those interests into products that can bridge the gap of outsider art and fall into mainstream markets. Because here's the difference between fine art and illustration as a program. Fine art is often bought by people with money. <laughs> it's often collected by the elite and that is wonderful. I love fine art. I am an advocate for fine art. We all love it. But illustration is for everybody. Illustration can be purchased on a keychain, in your favorite children's book, in your favorite toy. It's accessible. It's for every income level. And I think that by bridging the gap between outsider art and mainstream art, the key is in illustration. And so here are a couple of the works that my artists have made here. On the left, we have Ricky's wonderful hand-painted toys of superheroes that he created to fight off the COVID-19 pandemic. And on the right, we have a collection of works by several of my artists, including hand-bound planner pads that I work to bind with them, puzzles, cheer packages, toys. I give all of my artists the opportunity to sell their work in our online store. And something that I think makes Novel really different and unique is that there's so much attention to the level of quality in every product, not just in the idea behind the product, the drawings that the artists create, but also the product photography so that people can really picture these items in their lives so that stores in the future can picture these items on their own shops. Because my goal as the founder is not just to have everyone work with me or collaborate with me. I want them to be able to leave Novel eventually and say, Gabby, I got my work into a store. <laughs> I got my work into a magazine. I started my own online shop and I know exactly what to do. I know how to take the photographs. I know how to describe the products. I know what to do. And so, by collaborating with my artists at every step between what are your interests? What product do you want to create? Who is this for? And how we take the pictures and present it? My artists learn by doing and whether or not they lack understanding verbally, seeing every bit of the process and being involved in every bit of the process helps them gain confidence to do it themselves in the future. 
We participate in so many art festivals. This was one of my favorites from last year of November. We participated in the Jackalope Art Festival in Pasadena. And all of my artists, whether it's selling their work on their online stores, um, selling it on my online store, or at an art festival, each artist keeps up to 80% of everything that they earn from every product that we create together. If I'm involved in a, a more heavy way, like personally hand binding planners myself, then we might split it 50-50. But if it's something like stickers, pins, um, hand painted items that only they did, then the the sky is the limit with how much they they can earn from their work and my artists really love to interact with the public in their own way at their own pace one of my artists nick was so great at bringing people to our booth and he was doing it in a way that sometimes scared people away but <laughs> little by little he learned what to say to bring people in what to say when people stepped in what to say when I wasn't present when he was just managing the booth on his own. I also offer web design and brand development services to my artists. Every single artist that's graduating from the program this year is graduating with an online store, a published book, and a brand of their own that they can take and develop. Last year, two of my artists, Nick Akison and Chilton Morals, participated in their first makers markets completely on their own managing their own booths and it was absolutely fantastic it was their chance to see their brands come to life so for nick like i said in the beginning he has always wanted to create his brand house of fun so i helped him develop everything that you see here and he sold out of those wonderful teacher's mugs he was the first artist to create his own business cards and Chilton here also had his own brand with stickers and pins and mugs and tote bags. And it was just wonderful to see them realize what they want to do. You know, some of them want to continue doing art markets on their own. Some of them have realized that socializing with the public isn't for them. And that's totally okay. This program is completely tailored to them. So if it's not something they want to do, then that's okay. My job is to figure out how you can sustain your career in the future. Just to show you a little bit more of my artist's work, on the left, I have a quick story for you. My artist, Christian, was actually commissioned by a city program called Leadership Pasadena after our first arts festival. They wanted him to create five illustrations of people working as a team. And so I negotiated with them that since this was his first time drawing people, he would get $100 per illustration. And then Leadership Pasadena asked us to make 25 planners for their students. So he got $100 per illustration, so $500. And then he also got 20% of each of the planners that I hand bound myself. So I printed the pages out, I designed the layout, I bound the book myself, and he wound up getting about $625 just from a couple hours of work. And because of that, now he has experience writing and examining a creative brief, collaborating with me, and he feels more confident. On the right is an example of our seasonal product launches. We do things for Halloween, we do things for spring, we do things for summer. All of our guys love Halloween, so we had to come out with a Halloween collection. And we also do things for Christmas. One of my favorite things to do is creating Christmas cheer packages full of my artist's work. Everything from Christmas cards to coloring your own bookmarks. It's all handmade and it, sell, it sells out every single year, so <laughs> it's what I love. So also, this is a, a little bit more of our Christmas collection here. Um, I am trying to expand Novel's offerings beyond just the mentorship program because I've received a couple of applications that I currently can't take because the mentorship is full. So I am offering a new service of simply branding and web development for artists who have an established portfolio. If you are an artist with a disability who loves what you do and you have pieces already, whether it's crochet, sculpture, toy making, drawing, painting, please email me. My link is at the bottom of this slide and let's schedule a 30 minute call to see if I can create a web website for you. 
a logo for you, create a brand, and also help you come up with three service offers for regular patrons, businesses, and community service members. Thank you. Thanks, Gabby. So this is really something when we were talking about supports that to think about when you're in self-determination, what kind of supports? And, and I think that one of the key things Kelly said was, um, how do you monetize what you want to do, your hopes and dreams? And so that this is where looking for programs like Novel who can help you, you know, because these are not skills that necessarily come easy to anybody. Um, and so, you know, figure out, oh, I might need like one of the things my son needed to learn to do is um, how to take credit cards. He didn't know how to accept credit cards. So it was one of the things they practiced and learned how to do. Um, even things like, oh, you need to greet people when they come up to you and say hello and smile and those things. And so there were definitely things that um, uh, uh, there were growth areas that he is able to use and able to um, expand as he is becoming uh, an, uh, okay, I'm going to say it wrong. What is it? He says he wants to be a podcaster and, oh, Gabby might have to help me. Influencer? Influencer. There you go. So you can tell I'm old. <laughs> These are all new terms. And so, you know, sometimes you look at the older traditional um, programs for employment, they're not even looking at these things. And so it's important. And it's important to know that you can make money at these. You can have income. You can have passive income from this. So it's something to think about. My next really exciting um, one that I want to share with you, I'm going to share my screen again. I want to introduce to you Spiderhood. Spiderhood, are you there? Uh, Maribel Ahumada is going to be speaking for Spiderhood as Spiderhood is going to uh, share. He is an influencer. He has created a digital platform and he um, is a, uh, he's on social media. And so um, Maribel, do you wanna talk a little bit about Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Maribela Humada. I am the mother of um, Spiderhood. Um, and he is um, building his um, micro enterprise. Um, I can tell you that uh, before um, self determination, um, this was not possible. He is in his uh, second year of self determination. And even though his regional center is not fully um, supporting this dream quite yet, um, I can tell you that just having a um, coach, technology coach, the first year, he was able to create his um, different platforms of a spider hood, which is an Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and he is able to, he was able to create 44 um, um, designs and sell 44 products in his um, store online. Uh, you can scan the code right there online. It will take you directly to his um, store. And he is um, selling um, very well online. And he's um, doing just great, you know, trying to fulfill one of his dreams because he's also, you know, Edward raised in his brand. Um, he has the merch online and he is also working on a um, comic book series that, you know, is gonna come to the market pretty soon um, as we allocate more funds for this with the help of hopefully the regional center. And um, he is trying to accomplish also to become a voiceover. Um, voice actor and thank you for your heard and um and um something new that you know he's been invited to participate in one um Netflix um um story or uh that you know he's gonna be interviewed pretty soon so pray for him. So what I'm trying to say with all this that you know take to self determination and just one coach for the first year we were able to expand and um and being able to um, create everything that you see here. 
you know, he has a big dreams, just like Kelly said, you know, I'm a mother who has a high expectation for him. Um, and he has big dreams. So um, I just want him to live the life that he wishes to live, not the one that society wants our kids to live. You know, he's been participating also with um, another uh, uh, micro enterprise fairs, which was the first one with the uh, ICC, which I am also part of. And uh, he was, back then, he was not in self-determination, but uh, reaching out to sponsors and just for people who are starting also, if you don't have the funds or the support from the regional center yet, you know, you can reach out to sponsors, companies out there who want to donate you know, money to create something. I remember the first prayer that we have, um, somebody, you know, support him and um, give him some money to buy everything to make cookies with the Spanish word design. It was a great success in the first fair. Second one with the ICCS also, he was selling a banner that he created for, um, um, uh, what was it, the, the, the wellness, wellness tips you know, to encourage people to always stay healthy in your mind and believe in yourself and never give up. So we sell, you know, like 50 of them in one day. So we've been working really hard trying to, you know, support his dream. And um, I cannot imagine, you know, maybe next year, hopefully um, we have more support from the regional center, which is Westside. So one day he can um, really live out of, you know, this um, that we're starting now, which is the Spotify brand. So if anyone wants to visit, please scan the code or visit uh, Spotify in Instagram, YouTube, and um, TikTok. I have to, I, he has the coolest stuff. Like you have to look at all of these things. Go and look at his site. It's amazing. All of the things, 44 products. Is it just amazing? Um, and what I really loved was you talking about getting the right support. He needed the technical support to help him create these. Oh, look at Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sells bottles. <laughs> and he has the shirt right here. And it says Spotty Hood on the other side. He has uh, cups. He has beanies out there, sweatshirts, all kinds. Of, I mean, the quality is excellent. So please visit and support. We have to support our, you know, lowest and these um, dreams that they have. So. Exactly. It is so amazing. I love it. Um, so I also want you to know that we have a great video. We're running long, so I don't have time to play the video for you, but we're going to put it in the chat. And so go and see it. And you can see it was the, the um, micro enterprise fair that, that ICC had. And it's just a short video to go see, but it's very inspiring and you're going to love it. You'll see all of the, the different micro enterprises out there. So thank you, Spiderhood. Thank you, Mara, so much for thank being you. here. Thank you so much. Believe everything is possible. Everything the is determination possible. Determination is possible. Yeah. The, the before and after self-determination is, is, is a life changer. So if you're not in self-determination yet, please enroll. And I cannot wait to see where Spiderhood is this time next year. And I'm willing to bet he's going to have his million viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm willing to pray. Pray. Yeah, that's yes. all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Spiderhood. Our next presenter who I want to introduce are Doug Pascal, Pascover, and Tina Ewing Wilson. Tina Willing you will oh my goodness. Tina Ewing Wilson, you met at our very first presentation, and she talked a bit about her journey through with employment. But one of the things she's actually current currently working on is a micro enterprise. Doug Pascover is her independent facilitator. And Tina, you have a great, what do you call him? He's your... He's, he's my, he's Sir Doug. Sir he's Doug. Sir Doug. He's yeah. my knight in shining armor. He's, he's been there for me for over 20 years. Like, I couldn't do this program without him. Like, I couldn't. Uh, you okay. absolutely could. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> no so what, what I was hoping you guys could talk about since you were like in the process of creating a micro enterprise, what are some of the things you're um, having to think about as you're developing it and, um, you know, uh, that you 
want people to kind of think about when they're creating their spending plans? Um, well, I think it's definitely just like um, Kelly was saying, it's definitely important to remember to keep your plan fluid. My plan changes from day to day, from year to year. We're constantly changing it to meet my current need. Um, and I think that's important to remember. And also to remember to ask for what you want and need, because if you don't ask, the answers already know. That's, that's a big one right there. Just like I ask Doug for stuff all the time. Don't always get it, but I ask. Just asked him if I can go with novels, so he's going to be exploring that avenue. <laughs> well, and Tina, you were thinking about what were you thinking about your micro enterprise? Um, well, I do crochet, but don't really know how to market it, and I'm a little bit frustrated because the the thing we were going trying to do was I had chosen one of my staff to be a micro enterprising specialist, but then it just keeps not going the way we want it to go because scheduling mishaps and life changes. And so like right now I'm taking like a little break, like my micro enterprise is still in my plan, but I'm focusing on, I just got a job. <laughs> with DVU and that's my focus right now and so I'm still producing my crochet but I'm not trying to market it right now because the fact is I have a lot of things I don't know how to do like I don't know what kind of business licensing I need I don't know what my legal what legal issues I might have but I'm still having fun crocheting and I want to pursue it and they want to find out how to market it because people ask me all the time to sell them stuff but it's hard for me to figure out what to charge and so I need I need help with that and part of the problem is my disability one of the biggest parts of it is I don't do I I get so much anxiety about numbers that like math it just doesn't happen it's not that I'm stupid and can't do math but it causes me so much anxiety that it makes it so I can't do math like budgets are I just my whole everything shuts down I just can't function with it like I'm I'm good at tens and fives but everything else is just like it might be written in alien because I just can't I can't even look at it it's too hard for me but I mean that's what Doug's for Doug is my numbers guy <laughs> Which I love. So it's so um, you're not going to let that stop you from from making it to the dreams that you want to have you finding the supports. Yeah, you 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 have to be honest and say, hey, this is my limitation. How do we find a way around it? And like I'm, I'm frustrated because um because sometimes like it's just too, too much. And we, that's when I have to call Doug and say, hey, Doug, I, I know we, we're trying to do this micro enterprise, but I need a break because I'm overwhelmed right now and I can't even think about it. So can we just set that funds aside and try again in January? But can you find me somebody that can help me support? And I'm so excited that we, that novel's here because like, and they do help with crochet because like I told Doug he has to contact you because I want to work with you. So I'm so excited now. <laughs> So but that's what this kind of thing, that's why I love SDB Connect and and things like that where we all network with each other because, I mean, that's awesomeness. Yeah. That's how SDP happens is networking and thinking outside the box and just saying, here, this is what I want to do. Help me do it. How do we do this? And I think the key is, is that, you know, it isn't easy. As anybody starting a business is not easy. And no. so you will you can have starts and stops and change direction and all of that. Um, so you see somebody like Spiderhood, who is so advanced, it, he didn't just arrive there. He's been working hard to get there. And so, but we want everyone to know it's possible and you can get there. 
everybody can get there. And so um, we are running a little late, so I want to make sure we get to Q&A. Before we start the Q&A, I do want to say we have our post test. So I, I, I know it's kind of annoying, but I am going to ask that everybody do the post test. We're going to put it in the chat. I, it's, I call it a test. It's not a test. It's a, a, a few questions to see if you, you know, gained anything from the What Works For Us series, the three-part series. Um, and then uh, if you're not familiar with us, the way we do questions is we do raised hands and we do questions in the chat and we alternate between the two. Um, and I think that Tina might have already hit on one of the questions that I saw um, right as you were talking is questions about the business piece, you know, business licenses. How do we do all of those things? And again, that's something absolutely when we talk about supports to find those supports that you use self-determination to have somebody who's going to help you set up your business, who's going to help you keep your, your benefits while if you when you start bringing in money to help you set up a website to help you do all those pieces that you're if you're not sure how to do it that's a perfect thing to think about of how do i get that help who's going to support me to do that um so i'm going to start with catalina you have your hand up go ahead are you able to unmute I'm not sure. Catalina, do you want to unmute? I think she might be having problems unmuting. Oh, there you go. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Catalina. I have a 22-year-old son. It's his cell, second year in second cell determination, and I am setting up his my micro enterprise and i'm looking into all the different types of things that we can do and and what the first lady explained it was a good thing because i learned quite a lot to be able to help my son the thing i'm a little bit sad whatever little english i know i understood some things but i'd like for the next time if you can have an interpreter so they would interpret the Spanish because for the ones that we don't understand a whole lot of English, it's hard. Thank you. Oh, Catalina, we do have an interpreter. Um, it, it, you see the globe at the bottom? We do have interpretation. I'm sorry, I might've said it before you came in. I tried many times setting it in Spanish and the moment that I said it in Spanish, the people handling the meeting, it was rejected. I tried like 10 times to set up the Spanish. In fact, if I do it, if I try to do it, it won't let me do it. I've been trying to set up, oh. set it up in Spanish, but it got changed to English automatic. The subtitles, the uh. captions. I, I understand the captions. I thought you were talking about interpretation, the, the captions, I understand. But so unfortunately the captions can only be in one language at a time. Um, and since we use the captions for people with disabilities who um, have hearing loss or are deaf, we provide the captions in English. And then we provide verbal, Spanish interpretation, and we can't do both. I'm, I'm maybe someday, the uh, Zoom will will allow inter uh, captions in two different languages. But right now, it's just one, so we have to keep it in English for those people with disabilities who are deaf. I am sorry. I was doing it wrong. I was choosing captions. I was not choosing the interpretation. I was not doing the interpretation option. I was not able to do it before. I was trying to change the caption language instead of choosing interpretation. Well, since I'm here, I have a question. My daughter works for my son. And we're going to do taxes. And I was going to ask this question. Can she, as the client lives at home, will she be able... 
like I H S S because he lives at home. Can they use the same form or not? Are you asking about the um, the live-in caregiver so they don't withhold taxes? Yeah, it's um, it will depend on your financial management service. All of them do not do that, even if there is a live-in caregiver. So you'll need to ask your FMS. Because they're 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 all different. If the so if the FMS says no that they don't use that form, then it's a no go. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that you can tell your tax preparer there is a way that they can do it. I don't want to give you tax advice because I will tell you wrong. <laughs> and, and so um you definitely would talk to your tax person. Um, and explain that they are a live-in and see if they can do it on your taxes piece. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so Liliana, Lillian at 455 said, does an IF need to be vendored with regional center in order to do a person-centered plan? And that's such a great question. No, to do the person-centered plan portion, even with all the other changes, person center plan does not need to be vendored. So you can pick whoever you want to do your person center plan. It's the part after the person center plan to when you transition in that section, they call self-directed supports. And currently you would need to use a vendored 099 person to help you with that piece. But the initial person center plan, you do not need to be vendored. Um, Valdemitra, how are you? Good to see you. Can you unmute? Well, not sure she, maybe she's not there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead to the chat and then we'll go back to Val Dimitri if and we'll give her another chance after. So Carolyn Johnson at 543 said, do you have to go through DOR to start a micro enterprise? No, you do not because um, DOR has the specific things that it can provide and micro enterprise isn't. Now, remember with DOR, they typically have, you can either do one or the other. You can do education or employment. And so if you are using them for some education, then all of your employment, that generic resource goes away because they, they won't help you with. So that means self-determination program can cover it. If you select them for employment, Microenterprise tends to not be something that they will do. There might be things that they can help support with. Um, and usually I'll tell you, the there's more chance that the paid internship program, and not all regional centers do this with their paid internship program, can use the money that they would have paid you for the internship to, to start a microenterprise. So these are things you'd wanna talk to your regional center about, say, I wanna start the microenterprise. But don't let the fact that they're not adding it to your budget prevent you from putting it in your spending plan as you're organizing your services, you know, um, work into the service, that work into your plan that you want the supports for the micro enterprise. So I hope that answers your question. Um, Val Dimitra, did you, were you able to unmute? I think maybe she's not quite there still. So I'm gonna take the next question from chat. It was from Elena L at 548. And she asked, is there any age restriction when we hire a website specialist? No, this is the beauty of self-determination program. There, you know, we talked about that. We know that there's restrictions an age for how much help you get from the regional center for employment, which makes no sense because most of us started 
at a young age, maybe babysitting or doing things. We worked and went to school at the same time. So why they the regional center won't help along the way is beyond me. Um, they do have school district programs. And so that's where they kind of leave it to the programs like workability. Um, uh, I will tell you that student services with DOR and workability, they offer a good opportunity for a first job, perhaps. Um, they have limited choices, you know, so like our program where, where my son grew up, they could work at Walgreens or uh, Petco. And that was it. And so he did those as his very first job, you know, his entry level, and he tried it for a little bit. And, you know, he came home and basically said, well, that was an okay job, mom, but this is not what I want to do for my life. <laughs> but, you know, that's how we all start, right? We start at entry level jobs and we figure out what we want to do with our lives. Um, the problem with the traditional system is that's it. That's the top. That's that's all you're going to get offered. And so that that um, glass ceiling goes away in in self determination. You know, your your um, imagination is all is the only thing that's going to limit you in self determination. Tom, do you have a question? Oh, hold on. You're still muted. There you go. Take four years to figure that out. <laughs> How can the STP funding help remodel, say, the room so that it could be more conducive to artists or kind of, you know, workshops? Can the STP provide that as part of microenterprise conversion, remodeling, like, you know, carpet, lighting? or upgraded electricity if I live in a very old apartment. And certainly not the consumable, but then the tools needed, right? So we could get that. Uh, would that be part of the SCP uh, one-time purchase, right? I would say it. I've heard some of those things paid for, but not all of them. So anything mm -hmm. that's attached to your house typically is is a difficult ask um i but things like lights lighting if you're doing like webcasting I, i've absolutely heard um like sound um barriers you know if you needed those kind of things or like the backdrops sometimes you, you'll need like the blue screen or green screen behind you i've seen them purchase those kind of things um but uh carpeting on floor or electric things i i couldn't see them them covering um, Kelly, do you have a thought on that? Actually, I think that it's it's against the CMS big, huge books rules to make modifications to the house that are not disability related. Um, that's that's my, I read it and I know that you can, I read all 300 pages. It was really fun. Um, and the what it's sticking out to me is things like heating systems that benefit the whole home or, you know, those different things cannot be used. You cannot use the um, CMS is Centers for Medicare Medicaid Services. Sorry for the acronyms, friends. Um, that's, I don't think that they'll do, they'll go for that. But I've had the same experience as Christiana getting things like lighting, you know, those um, circular lights that are, they make everybody look so beautiful on camera. I clearly don't have that one um that's uh that you can get paid for if it's but remember when it's a one-time purchase the regional center could try to remove those the numbers in the following year so it i mean really like think about is this going to help is it worth it or some of these things maybe i'd use my ssi to pay for or maybe i'd use monies for my cal able account or Maybe I would win a lottery and have a whole bunch of extra money laying around and, you know, send a huge donation to all your favorite nonprofits and, and modify the house maybe that way. But those are just a couple of thoughts. And I see that Val's up there in, Val's the, up there in the cool kids section. Hi, Val. I hate to do this to you, Val, but we are at 601 and our interpreters, we, we, 
they work so hard and we always promise them we will end on time thank you thank you so much to our interpreters you always are patient with me because i know i talk fast um thank you all so much for coming um we enjoyed so much talking about micro enterprises and um we will see you at the next sdp connect thank you